and hope you get a blessing from these songs. So feel free to sing along with us. It's not, this is not a special item. <laughs> so, um, yeah, let's hear your lovely voices too.
Well, good morning, church, and, and thank you to our worship team who've set the scene for a, for a lovely service and inviting the Spirit of the Lord with us. I have a couple of announcements um, before we get started. Does anyone know what's happening at four o'clock this afternoon? Oh, so I saw one hand, a couple of hands. Awesome. So evangelism uh, seminar begins this afternoon, four o'clock over in the Alawara building. Still not too late to invite someone, still not too late to decide to come for yourself. So we would love to see a, a whole number of people there. Um, you may know the message already, but it is good for those perhaps who, who don't know to, to come along and um, see a crowd there and be supported by the local church. So if you can, we would love, we would love to see you there. Um, also, just a reminder, there is a small little fellowship lunch in, in the hall straight after service, so feel free to come along and, and fellowship with that as well. I feel I should probably um, provide a little bit of an update. It's been oh, maybe, maybe six weeks um, since our family as a whole have been here. I know Michelle and, Jen and Marcus were here a couple of weeks ago. But other than that, we've been a little bit scarce. And um, that is because we've been uh, visiting Michelle's father, who is very sick at the moment. And I know a lot of you have been asking me, so I just felt Maybe it might be time for a little bit of an update of, of where that is at. So Harold Waldrop, Michelle's father, um, has been sick for quite a while. Um, he's had cancer and a lot of different issues. Um, he was hospitalised in mid-March and was at that, at that point, we, we couldn't visit him because of COVID regulations, etc. Um, and he was given a time period of two to three weeks. Um, and so that, that comes as a shock, as you can imagine. But we have been blessed to be able to spend uh, a lot of time with him. So if we're not here, we're, we're usually down there with him. Um, that, that three week period has well and truly passed and we feel blessed that we have extra time with him. And we, we see plenty of good days. And so we're thankful to God for that. And I thank you for all the um, encourage, encouragement that comes from you guys as, as part of our family and just, just inquiring of, of, of how he is. So we thank you, thank you for that as well. But it's my privilege to welcome you all here this morning. And of course, it's a special morning, a special day tomorrow. I'm sure everyone is prepared for Mother's Day that is tomorrow, and we just want to make note of it today that this is a special weekend and we want to acknowledge our mothers here in our church. Whether you are a, a biological mother or, or a mother to many within the church family, we want to acknowledge you. You know, it's interesting, the Bible itself, when it describes how God comforts his people he likens it to the mother comforting her child. And to me, that just suggests a little bit of the power of the mother's comfort. Or even the Bible suggests that a mother won't forget her nursing child, or can she feel no love for her child? And it's just to suggest how impossible that, that fact could be. And again, likening God's love to the love of a mother. And we all know that even on the cross, Jesus made sure that his mother was taken care of. And yes, so mothers are a very special person and we want to acknowledge them today. And we have some special readings um, that I would just like to invite some helpers to come up and they're just going to do, read a little poem each so I might invite David if you would like to come up first. And David's going to read. I've just, I've just sprung these reading on these kids this morning, so there's no practice, no anything. 
but they have said yes, and we love people who say yes. So do you want to read your reading, David? Okay. Yeah, you come up here. Mum, I love you for all that make. Mum, I love you for all that makes. For all that you do, I'll hug you and kiss you because you love me too. You feed me and need me to teach you to play, to smile because I love you on this Mother's Day. Thank you. You can sit down, thanks. All right, Nathaniel. Nathaniel has a poem as well. Mother, when I see you all the things you do, I can tell your love for me is true. I thank God he gave me you. I love you through and through. And Gemma. My mum is really great. She's as sweet as she can be. When I need some help, I know she's always there for me. Mum loves me all the time, even when I'm a pest. She always takes good care of me. My mother is the best. Well done, you guys. As I said, I sprung out on you this morning, so thank you so much. So I just want to consider this morning what a cherished gift our mums are. If you can think of all the things that God has blessed you with, is there a greater blessing than your mum? If you can think of something, come and tell me later on, but I'm pretty sure you won't. When a child is born, a mother is born, and from that moment onwards, she sacrifices everything for her child. From the time immemorable, the selfless, mother, the selfless love of a mother is known all over the world and is a universal truth. Today we want to celebrate this unique gift of God. I'd just like to invite our singers up now and we'll start with our first hymn. Thank you. Hymn number one, 300, sorry, hymn 321, My Jesus, I Love Thee.
There's now come time to pr for prayer, so I'd like to invite you to kneel or bow your heads. Let us pray. Our Lord, Father, we thank you once again that we can meet here, surrounded by friends, surrounded by your love, Lord, surrounded by your angels, as we worship your holy name. Jesus, we thank you for this Sabbath morning. We thank you that at this point in time in world's history that we are able to meet together. And we thank you, Lord, for this, for this honour. Jesus, as we come before you in the throne of prayer, we, we know that we have not always done right. We are sinful. We struggle. We have struggles every day, Lord. And we pray that that we would look to you. We pray that you would cover those sins, Father, as, as you have promised to do. We thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you, Lord, that you call us to you. And so we want to do that this morning. Lord, this morning I want to remember those who are, who are sick and unwell. The list seems to just increase, increase, Lord, and we know that too is a sign of the times. But Father, we want to remember these people and we pray for them. We pray for their health. We pray for their comfort. We pray that they may know that, that you were there uh, placing your healing hand on them. Lord, I want to pray for those who are here today, those who, who have had a rough week, those who are feeling down, who are not feeling maybe as they should, Father. We, we pray that your spirit would lift them up. We pray that um, we would come away this morning feeling blessed and ready for another week. Lord, I want to pray for Daniel, who will be leading our message this morning, that, that his words will be words of strength words that will inspire us to keep going. Lord, may we be a light here in Bendigo. May we not sit in our hands. May we um, be prepared to, to get in there and get dirty, Lord, for you. May we do the work that you require of us, Lord. And at this time, I want to pray for our evangelism program that begins this afternoon. I pray for our speaker, Vadim, who will be presenting it. And Lord, I pray that there will be people who need to hear it, will be there to hear it, Father. And they will come away with questions, wanting to know that little bit more about you. Lord, we thank you so much for your blessings. We thank you for your promises. We thank you that your return is so, so close. And Lord, I just pray for each one here, um, for our spiritual health, Lord, that we will keep going as you would encourage us to. Thank you, Jesus, for what you've done and what you've promised us and what we have to look forward to in your loving name. Amen. It's now time for our offering. I'd just like to invite those deacons to come forth. And our offering today is for the South Pacific Record. Thank you.
Let us pray. Lord Father, we thank you for the abilities to earn money. We thank you that all these abilities have come from you. Everything we have comes from you, Lord. And at this point, we rejoice that we have the opportunity to, to return a little bit to you. So I pray that you would bless these tithes and offerings this morning and that you would send them where they need to go, Father, and they would do the work that you re would require. Thank you f that we may be a part of this, and we thank you in your loving name. Amen. Could all the children please, ch could all the children please come down for the children's story? This book is called Mummy Cuddles. I thought it'd be appropriate for Mother's Day. I love your morning cuddles, Mummy, especially when you hold me tight and tickle my tummy to make me giggle. Mummy, you are wonderful because you bounce around the purple meadow with me and we have so much fun. I bring you bunches of pretty flowers because they make you smile and you always give me a big cuddle to say thank you. Mummy, I love it when we look at our reflections in the forest stream and pull lots of silly faces together. When I fall and hurt my paw, you are always there to give me a big cuddle Wipe my tears away and kiss it better. You are the best mummy because you collect big juicy carrots with me and you never get upset if I eat too many. When we hop through the woods, you show me all the beautiful butterflies with their wings that flitter flutter. You're so much fun, Mummy, because I want to borrow because when I want to borrow in the meadow and get all messy, you always join in. You let me play silly games with all of my friends, like when we go tumbling down the grassy green hills in the daisy fields. Mummy, I love you because at bedtime you sing me sweet lullabies while the clouds in the sky turn peachy and golden. When I'm very sleepy and close my eyes, you cuddle me and rock me in our cosy burrow in the soft moonlight. Your mummy cuddles are the best cuddles. I love you, Mummy, because you are the best Mummy in the world. So, tomorrow is a special day for mothers to celebrate um, mothers who are very important to us and or even special people that are important to us. So, what can we do for our mothers tomorrow? Help them. Help them, yeah. What's something else you can do for your mothers? Maybe cook them breakfast in the in the morning. That might be nice. And maybe tidy up your toys. Yep. And did you know that Jesus also loves us so much? And I'm going to read you a text from the Bible. It's in Psalm 139, verse 13. And it says... For you created me in my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. Isn't that special? Jesus knew us even before we were born. 
So that makes it very special, doesn't it? So make sure on Mother's Day that you give your mum a big cuddle and say, I love you, mummy. Okay, remember to do that. Thank you, you can get back to your seats now. Okay, so I think Michelle and Gemma have been very busy making some Mother's Day presents. So the children are going to hand out the gifts um, while we listen to a video clip. Could all the children please come down to the front? We're going to sing a song together. Okay, grab a microphone. Three. 
Well, thank you, children and mothers and everyone uh, that's put so much effort into making this a special day for our mothers. I, I guess to me, I feel like today is Mother's Day rather than tomorrow, although I guess uh, we'll do something special tomorrow as well. But being able to celebrate Mother's Day in church is something special to me. So we will talk a little bit about mothers. Uh, but first, let me just say my name is Daniel. I'm the minister here at this church, and you are very welcome. And if you want to talk to me afterwards, I'm very happy to talk to you as well. I will be here for the uh, evangelistic program this afternoon as well. So please do feel free to come to that, and we can talk there too and learn more about each other. I have a question for you, as I often do. Do you remember a time, it'd be probably quite a long time ago, I hope, for most of us, maybe you only vaguely remember it, but do you remember a time when you were going to say thank you and your mother told you to say thank you before you could do it? Do you remember any time like that? Oh, that's a bad sign. You don't say thank you? Your mother's never taught you to say thank you? Have you ever had that experience where you were going to say thank you and, and your mum beat you to it? Uh, I can see, yeah, I see a couple of hands, a couple of smiles. All right, okay, maybe you're just a bit shy. I can certainly remember that. Now, once again, I'm not saying that I remember specific occasions, but I know it happened to me. Do you remember the feeling of indignation to think, hey, I was going to do it right. I was going to say thank you. You stole, now, I, now when I do it, it's going to seem forced. It's going to seem unnatural. Now, do you resonate with that feeling? Maybe you felt that even more recently as well. Maybe it's not just thank you. Maybe there's lots of different things that, uh, you know, people have tried to pull you up on that you think, oh, well, you know, I would have done it if you'd given me a chance. And, you know, mothers are not perfect, is that controversial to say? Mothers have their problems too. And of course, Mother's Day is a day where we pretend that's not the case. No, no, Mother's Day is a day where we acknowledge what mothers do do. And being perfect doesn't have to be one of those things. Did you know that? You know, sometimes people like to blame. They like to blame their parents for all their problems. Now, we do learn in Scripture that God visits the sins of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generation. So it's not that we don't inherit some of the faults of our parents. But is it really helpful for us to blame our parents for what we are today? By all means, if they've done something wrong, then they should be held accountable for that. But we ourselves need to take responsibility for ourselves. So mothers are not perfect, but what are they? And, and what are they in, this, in the way that tells us something about God? Because in Genesis, God says that he made man and woman in his image. He made man in his image, male and female, right? So in what way does a mother share with us God's image? There's a passage in Matthew 23, verse 37, and this is just before Jesus talks about all the signs of his coming and of the destruction of Jerusalem. And in Matthew 23, verse 37, Jesus says, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the one who kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to her, how often I wanted to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, but you were not willing. This is a, an, a, a, a picture, an illustration that is used at least twice in Scripture here and also in the Old Testament to compare God to a mother. Now, I'm very comfortable, as you know, with comparing God to a father. That's the main way that he relates to us. But God also can relate to us like a mother. Mothers also have um, attributes that tell us about God. What might, what might those be? Well, I already asked you, have, have you ever had your mother tell you to say thank you? 
Maybe if I just ask the question, has your mother ever told you to say thank you? Maybe that's an easier thing for you to remember. Can you all say yes to that? Give me a nod. Yeah? All right. A few. Now, my experience that I had of saying thank you, or I was going to say thank you, but my mum said, say thank you first. You know, we could, we could blame our mothers for not being perfect. We could blame our mothers for, for saying something that was perhaps unnecessary or unhelpful. But what if we look at it the other way? Why did she say that to me? Why did she say, say thank you, or what do you say, or whatever, right? Why did she say that? Because she'd said it a thousand times before, hadn't she? And so she was saying it again. And then I said, oh, you know, I was going to say thank you. But that was the first time that I was going to say thank you. Every other time before that, I was just going to grab whatever it was and run off and eat it or do whatever. And I wasn't going to say thank you. But now there's a point, a transition, where we can resent, oh, you know, my mum was doing something that I didn't like. Why, was she, why did I not like it? Because she had actually trained me. She had already taught me. Now I had learned to say thank you. And that was something I could then do without being prompted from then on. And so even some of those things that sometimes we think, oh, come on, mum, why are you doing this? It's actually because there's been that relationship. It's because she's been doing that teaching all those years before. So is it important to say thank you? And why do mothers tell their children to say thank you so much? What might be some of the reasons? When mum gives you something, what do you have to say? Thank you, right? Why? Is it because mum wants appreciation? Well, secret here, mum does want appreciation, right? Every mother wants appreciation. In fact, everybody wants appreciation. But is that the only reason? No, it's because, well, it's because everyone wants appreciation. And so mum is trying to teach us how to love, how to show appreciation to people. And Jesus himself does the same thing. In Luke chapter 17, in Luke chapter 17, Jesus heals 10 lepers. And then in verse 15, one of them, when he saw that he was healed, he returned and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And then in verse 19, Jesus says, Arise, go your way. Your faith has made you well. Why did Jesus want to affirm and praise? In 17 and 18, he says, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? Were there not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? Why is Jesus praising this man? Because he said, thank you. Now, I've heard many Mother's Day sermons that talk about the sacrifices that mothers make. And it's true. You know, I, I heard recently, I'm, I've been trying to keep myself informed a little about the, uh, the election coming up. And in one of the debates there was a comment made about the gender pay gap. Now, that's illegal in Australia. You're not allowed to have a gender pay gap in Australia. Why do we still have one statistically? Well, the answer is simple. Because mothers love their children. That's it. Mothers love their children more than money. Now, I'm not saying fathers don't love their children. Fathers, we, we love our children too. And we work hard to try to, you know, feed our families. But... Why is it that women in a free country that can choose to do what they please are willing to work shorter hours for fewer years and often in jobs that are not as well paid? Why do they do it? Well, maybe a woman needs to answer the question, but I, I think we all know the answer. It's because they love their children and they want to be there 
for their children. In fact, many mothers choose to sacrifice a career entirely. Why? Because they love their families, their children. It's not because they're lazy. There's nothing lazy about being a mother. There's nothing easy about it. It's not because they think they're going to get better rewards that way. We all love to get money. We all love to be paid. We all love to have the affirmation of being able to say, oh yes, I'm this job or that job. I'm an architect. I'm a pastor. Whatever. I'm a lecturer. I'm a counsellor. We all want to be able to boast about what we do. Can mothers boast? Well, they really should be able to, but not really in our culture. We don't really value mothers the way that we value other jobs. So we need to say thank you. We need to say thank you because we, are, we need to affirm mothers for what they do because they're not going to get that affirmation anywhere else. They're not going to get that affirmation from the broader culture or uh, movies or whatever. We need to say thank you. And that's not to say we don't say thank you to others as well. But there's another reason why we need to say thank you, and it doesn't have anything to do with the feelings of other people. And that is in Ephesians 4, verse 15. Ephesians, one of the letters of Paul, um, you can find it sort of right there in the middle. It's after Romans, First and Second Corinthians. Then there's just, just a few pages after that. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 15. Scripture says, But speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head, Christ. And, and it's talking about spiritual gifts. It's talking about different roles that we all have. But it says that we're to speak the truth in love. Now, why does it not simply say, speak the truth? Why doesn't it just say, speak the truth? Isn't, you know, for example, I don't like it when I hear people talking about social justice. Because to me, there's only justice or injustice. There's no such thing as white justice or social justice or, or poor, justice for the poor. Or just, it's justice for everybody, please. Or it's not justice. What about truth? Can something be true and not okay? It, can it be not okay to speak the truth? Surely not. Why are we told to speak the truth in love? Maybe there's another way of, of putting it. You might have heard. Speaking the truth as it is in Jesus. What does that mean? Once again, you know, things that I've... Uh, as I've listened to a couple of these election debates, are they saying a lot of facts? Yes, you get a lot of facts. And I assume that a lot of these facts are true. I... I don't know, I can only assume. But is it spoken in love? Or is it spoken to attack, to hurt, to tear down? Now that's fine, let the politicians do their politics. That's, I'm not judging them for that. But as Christians, do we use truth to hurt? Do we use facts to attack? Or do we use the truth to build up? It talks about growing in all things, into him who is the head, Christ. When we speak the truth, is it building people up in Christ or is it tearing other people down to make myself look good? And so when I thank somebody, I'm almost always speaking the truth. Now, maybe if somebody pushes you over and you, you, know, you spill your cup of tea or something and you say, thanks, maybe that's not the truth. <laughs> But there's pretty few circumstances where you say thank you to someone and there's no truth in it whatsoever. I think in almost all circumstances, we can find something to say thank you for. And thanking someone is an act of love. Thanking someone is affirming the truth that they have done something for me. Whether that's simply not shouting at me when, you know, they, they say something that I don't like, but they didn't shout at me, well, I can thank them for that. 
Or maybe they've, they have shouted at me, but they at least didn't ignore me. They at least chose to tell me what was on their heart and on their mind. I can thank them for that. Now, that's not to say that we should have no boundaries. That's not to say that we shouldn't stand up for, for our own rights as well. And when Jesus said, if you turn back to Matthew, uh, Matthew 23, 37, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the one who kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to her, how often I wanted to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, but you were not willing. Jesus has reached out. Jesus has made the appeal over and over again. Jesus has affirmed his people, and yet they have a choice. They have a choice to accept that or to deny it. And then the very next verse says, See, your house is left to you desolate. Because when we reject love, we will lose it. Not at first, perhaps, but eventually we will. And so let's not take love for granted. Let's continue to show love. Let's continue to thank, to affirm, to praise, to say I love you, even if we think they should already know it. Because that's what Jesus did. He kept reaching out. And when he was not accepted, he allowed people to have their wish and be separated from him. Love is not to be ignored. And no mother likes to be ignored. No mother likes to uh, have her kids run off and not listen to her, not do the thing that she asks her to do. And God is no different. God is a just God. God is a loving God. He wants to embrace us. He wants to accept us. If you turn to John 3, 16, I'm not going to recite it, even though I know it. I'm going to read it. Because maybe we, we recite this too quickly and too easily. The Gospel of John, chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. It is not a natural thing to give up your own son, your own child. Not for a father, not for a mother. It doesn't say the father so loved the son. It says God so loved the world, us. And so God's love is greater than the love of a mother. God's love is greater than the love of a father. But the love of a father or a mother helps us to get a glimpse of how much God loves us, that he's willing to sacrifice. He was willing to sacrifice honor and praise and glory to give us life just like our mothers were willing to sacrifice many good things for us. And also our fathers as well. But at the same time, God also does not want to be ignored. He doesn't want to be rejected. And so he appeals to us. I've heard it said, if you just give your life to Jesus, then you can do whatever. Do whatever's natural and it'll be what's right. But I wonder, how is that different from the non-believer? How is it really different? If I'm just living every day the way I choose, the way I want, and not thinking about others, not thinking about God. And sure, maybe if we are converted, then we will think about others. That's fine. But I don't find it a helpful instruction. To me, that more helpful instruction is what... Jesus says in all these passages, Matthew, Luke, John, and in Ephesians, make an effort to love. Make an effort to thank. The boys gave me the uh, privilege of being able to run through this sermon um, with them in Sabbath school. And we, we, at least I enjoyed that. And we talked about the boys are quite knowledgeable about science, actually. And we talked about plants. When you go and you go, we go to the shops, or maybe you just go to your dinner plate, whatever it is you go to, you get your food. 
How much of what you eat is natural? Maybe you have a vegan, raw food, plant-based diet. How much of what you eat is natural? Organic, no chemicals. How much of it is natural? Is it natural for spinach to grow in your garden? How many of you have wild spinach growing in your garden? Maybe you've got some spinach that you might have planted. How many of you have it just growing wild in the front yard? How about bread? How many of you have bread growing in your front yard? Or, okay, let's be realistic, wheat. How many of you have wheat growing in your front yard just by itself? Oh, wow, look at that. Well, what about something a bit easier? What about some Brussels sprouts? They're not so nice. Do they grow wild in our front yards? All right, I like them too, actually. Not everyone does. Broccoli, cabbage. Now, wheat is the exception, but all the other ones I've named were all originally one wild plant. And over many, many years, we humans have bred them very unnaturally to make all the different foods that we enjoy. So how natural is the food that we live by? How easy does our life, our li the sustenance that sustains our life, how easy does it come? Do we, you know, we just open the fridge and it's right there. Of course it's easy. Well, what if we didn't have the fridge? What if we didn't have the shops? Somebody has put a lot of effort into growing that food. Somebody has done something very unnatural called agriculture to produce that food. When God first created us, very good, we didn't have agriculture. We didn't have farming. We didn't have Brussels sprouts, sorry. Maybe they were planned all along, but we didn't have them yet. We just lived by the, the wildly grown, well, it was a garden, so the, the fruit that was growing there in the garden, we had all the food we needed. We didn't have to sweat for it. It all just came natural. But then we sinned. And because of sin, we cannot behave the way our natural impulses tell us to do. We cannot trust our natural impulses. And so when our natural impulse is to say, why isn't this cooked better? Or, oh, I don't like Brussels sprouts. Or, this isn't organic. Or whatever. When our natural impulse is to complain or to say, why do, I have to, why do I have to do all the work around here and you don't thank me? Whatever our natural impulse may be, we do need to overcome that by the power of Christ. And when we overcome that natural impulse to complain and instead choose to praise, to thank, to thank God, to praise God, also to praise and to thank our mothers, our children, our spouses, our brothers, our sisters, our friends, our work colleagues. When we choose to do that, instead of trying to get pity from other people, instead we choose to have power from God to bless the lives of others. That is what will make our lives fulfilled and happy. Not when everyone else gives us what we want, but when we choose to give. And so mothers are a witness to us. They choose to give. They choose to sacrifice. And that, I tell you what, that baby takes a very long time to say thank you, but they keep on giving. They keep on sacrificing. Let's be more like mothers. Let's be more like our Father, God. Let's sing together. A beautiful, very old song, which includes in it a celebration of mothers. And, and this was written by a man who lost so much. He'd lost so much. And he turned to God. And God gave him the power to bless us down through the centuries. Now thank we all our God. Let's sing together. And then after that I'll pray.
Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you so much that you love us as your little children. Father, I pray that as we go from this place, we might be true sons and daughters of Jesus, that we may be mothers and fathers to those around us, to love them as you love them, without waiting for thanks. Lord, may we love, affirm, and thank those around us for your glory and for your sake. In Jesus' name, amen.